You wanna know the number one secret to maintaining weight loss long-term? Well, okay, there's more than one secret, but one of the big ones is maintaining your resting metabolic rate. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I wanna talk a little bit about resting metabolic rate because it's such an important concept. So first, what is resting metabolic rate? Well, basically it's the amount of energy our body needs to live at rest, right? To pump the blood through our veins and our arteries, um, to take oxygen in and out of our lungs, to have our brain working, to maintain our temperature. And it's the sort of the basal functions that our body needs. It requires energy. And that's your resting metabolic rate. And that's important because that's what we use a lot of our calories for. In fact, the majority of our calories, basically like 70% or more of our calories that we take in are used for our basal functions. And the rest is used for our physical activities. Now, the thing is, though, that can change over time. And if it changes, if it lowers, you may be in trouble. And here's why. Say your, your um, resting metabolic rate is 1,500 calories, all right? So you go on a calorie-restricted diet. You're going to eat 1,200 calories um, to make sure you're losing weight. But you do it in a way where your body then responds by saying, okay, we're in malnutrition zone here. Um, so we need to reset our resting metabolic rate so that we don't die, basically. It's sort of like what the, I guess you could say, the evolutionary instinct is. So your body resets its um, resting metabolic rate down to 1,200 calories, and now you're no longer losing weight. So you say, i got to reduce my calories even more. So you can see this vicious cycle. Now, that is not healthy weight loss. And I, we've done another video on healthy weight loss, and we have a whole guide on healthy weight loss at dietdoctor.com. But that is not healthy weight loss. Maintaining your resting metabolic rate is a key component to healthy weight loss because that's what allows you to maintain your weight loss long term. Now, we've referred to the Kevin Hall study um, looking at the biggest loser TV show um, and the impact that has. We've referred to that before, but it's important just to bring up because what they did was in sort of an extreme calorie restriction, cardio, eat less, move more kind of concept, um, and they lost weight. But then the follow up study, some six years later, so the majority of them gained back their weight and their resting metabolic rate was 700 calories on average lower than it was in the beginning. So their resting metabolic rate was sort of long-term ruined, you could say, um, by this extreme um, deprivation type of, of intervention. And that's going to make it near impossible to maintain that weight loss. Now, why is that? Well, because if you're restricting calories, if you're not exercising, if you're losing muscle mass, those are the things that help maintain your resting metabolic rate is getting adequate nutrition, adequate protein, having adequate muscle mass. That's what's going to maintain your resting metabolic rate. So if you're losing weight, you want to lose weight in a way that maintains those. And we know the best way to maintain your lean mass is to eat adequate, if not a high amount of protein, and to do some sort of resistance training. Now, I think a lot of times when I say that, people think of you know bodybuilders pumping iron, drinking protein shakes, and no, that's not what it has to be just to maintain your resting metabolic rate, okay? Um, we go into the details in our, in our guide at dietdoctor.com, but basically it means getting around 1.5 grams per kilogram of protein and doing some sort of resistance training. It doesn't even have to be in the gym with weights. It could just be body weight exercises. It means moving your muscles to maintain them, right? You don't have to build them up, but you have to maintain them as you're losing weight because you don't want to lose your muscle tissue. The other thing is not purposely calorie restricting, not trying to set a certain amount of calories and not eat any more than that and really limiting your food intake, but rather eating in a way where you naturally feel full and satiated and will naturally reduce your calories because that means your body is getting adequate nutrition, adequate protein, adequate micronutrients that is not searching for more with your hunger, sort of this uh, protein leverage hypothesis. We have a podcast with professors uh, Robenheimer and Simpson about the protein leverage hypothesis that your body's going to seek out calories until it's until it's reached its level of protein that it wants to get to. And the same is likely true for many micronutrients. So when you eat in a way where you naturally reduce your calories, that's a much healthier way for maintaining your resting metabolic rate. Now, it actually has been shown that low-carb nutrition is a big part of that. Studies with low-carb nutrition show that you naturally reduce your caloric intake and you're going to um, lose mostly fat mass instead of muscle mass. Combining that with making sure you're getting enough protein 
and that you're doing some sort of a resistance training is the key to maintaining your resting metabolic rate. Now, the other thing we talk about in the guide is this association between lower resting metabolic rates and insulin resistance. So it also makes sense you want to eat in a way that's going to lower or live and eat in a way that's going to lower your insulin resistance to improve your resting metabolic rate. And again, low-carb diets can be helpful for that. So wrap this up real quick. Resting me metabolic rate probably one of the most important keys to sustainable weight loss. And you can maintain yours by maintaining your lean muscle mass, getting plenty of protein and adequate nutrition.